Hello everyone and welcome back to the third and final part in our Let's Create episode looking at Apex Legends and the creation of zip lines. In the first two parts of this uh, three part series we create a zip line that we can place anywhere into our map and we can travel up it and we can travel down it. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at how to make it so that we can jump into the middle of the zip line like you do in Apex and zip down it based on which way you're facing because at the moment it will only start you at one end or the other so for this to work we need to first of all calculate how far along this line we actually are now this involves a bit of maths and a bit of explaining so let me explain what we're going to be doing so imagine a zip line is traveling between 0 and 1 the 0 and 1 line indicates 0 being the start and 1 being the end and we've got that uh, we've got that sorry on our timeline so remember our timeline goes from zero value to a one value this is what that represents now the player could appear at any point within that line what we need to do is work out the ratio between where the player is and where the start and end are of our uh, zip line and we need to, to do that we need to find out what the distance is between the player and the beginning of our zip line once we've got that, we can use it to calculate that ratio. So to calculate it, we need to get the distance travelled. So to do that, we'll get the player's location and then take away the start location. Once we have the distance travelled, we can then work out the ratio by doing the distance travelled divided by the full length of the whole entire zip line. So for example, if our zip line is 200, meter, uh, 200 units long, and the player is currently at 450 and the start point is at 300 I'm going to take 400, uh, 300 away from 450 leaving me a distance travelled of 150 units to work out the ratio then is 150 divided by 200 the full width of our zipline 150 divided by 200 gives us a value of 0.75 planting us directly at 3 quarters along that line we can then use that to set the playhead of our zipline uh, accordingly. So this is what we're going to attempt to replicate inside Unreal Engine 4. So to do this, we're going to have to create a function on our zipline. So open up your zipline, and in your functions list, click on plus function to create a new function. And here we're going to type in get distance ratio. And the get distance ratio, it's also going to be a set distance ratio, so kind of not the best name, but it will do for this purpose. So we first of all need to get that first uh, sum, that distance travelled. And we get that by getting the player's location and taking away the start location. So let's get the player's location first of all. To get the player character. And then from there, we want to get the actor location. So this is now getting our player's location. Next, we want to get the spline's starting location. So drag your spline component into the event graph. And then from there, we're going to get location at spline point. And you'll leave the point index at zero, but change your coordinate space to be world. Because this is going to return us a world location. We want this to also be a world location too. So we need to first of all take away from the actual location the spline starting point and that is now our distance travelled okay now it currently is a vector because we're working in three dimensional space whereas my demonstration we've done two dimensional we have to now deal with three dimensions so a vector will be the output here to turn this into a float because we eventually need to get to a float and the reason why we do is because if we go back to my event graph, the playhead time, which is new time, is a float value. So we need to get that vector into a float. Fortunately, it's quite easy to do so. So here's a vector. And the vector, basically a vector is a line. Okay, And this line is going has a length to it. So if we drag this out and type in vector, if I can spell it, vector length. This is now going to return a float, 
which is the length of this line, which is the difference between the player's location and the start and spline point. With this ratio, we can now use this to set the playhead of our timeline. Now when we create the timeline, we actually created a variable which is referencing that timeline. So in your variables list, you may have to open up the component sub section, but you'll find your zipline travel timeline available to you. Drag this out to get a reference to your timeline. And then from here, we can set the playhead, uh, set the playhead by set new uh, set time, set new time. So this is going to be the output part, but we still need to get our uh, ratio from our distance. Okay, so this is just a length. We need to get the spline length and take this away. Uh, so divide this by that spline length, and that will get us our ratio to be used in this. So drag your spline component back out, and you want to get length. Get spline length. And you want to do vector length divided by the spline length. And that can now get plugged into the set new time on your zipline travel. Like so. Click compile. And let's go back to the event graph. On the event graph, we want to put this at this start. So, if after my interaction and before the, uh, detect direction, we're going to put the get distance ratio in there and plug that in. And click compile. And that should be it. So, let's test that out. Click play. So, if I jump into the middle of our line, I'm still going from the start. Why am I going from the start? So, let's take a look at what we've got here. Apologies, I made a slight error. Where we had previously set to, from true and false, to go to play from start and reverse from end, obviously that's not that's going to overwrite our time that we set. So we need the true just to go to normal play, and the false to go to normal reverse. Click compile, then go back, and let's have a test of that one. Uh, looks a bit better and that's better there so now I can jump into my zipline and travel along it so let's test that out by placing a few so to create a new zipline all I have to do is drag my zipline actor out and grab my endpoint and move it to where I want the zipline to be so I'm going to make my zipline fly up to here like so it's going to raise it up a little bit like that. And then I'm going to also create a zipline that travels the length of the map. Like so. I'm going to raise up a little bit. The cable will act a bit goofy, but that will tighten up as soon as the game plays. So I can raise this up like so. play so let's just ride our zipline and to show I can jump into the middle of it I can jump into there now it may it was more noticeable in the longer one but did you notice the error so if I was to say jump in line with this box here oh <laughs> let's try that again there you go. notice I just started just before the boxes okay it wasn't directly where i wanted to be now the reason behind that is because if i go into my timeline my timeline is actually going between zero and two i get distance is going between zero and one so what i need to do to fix this issue is to get my timeline and multiply this value my get distance ratio multiply the ratio by the length of time the zip line travel timeline is going so zipline travel component which we got going to set new time we also want to get its length and multiply that by the ratio so b 
bit messy, but hopefully that makes it a bit clear what's going on there. So before we put the ratio in, we're going to times it by however long our timeline actually is. So if we play, it should be a lot more accurate. Oh, it would help if I actually landed the jump. There you go. And I can travel along the line. So now, now we've got a pretty much a fully functioning zip line. But there's one thing else we're going to add to this, and that is the dismount. So on a long zip line like this, I may want to jump off here. But I can't, I have to wait till I get to the end. So we're going to go into our zip line and add that basic functionality to our zip line. Now notice on our zip line travel, we have the function stop. So when we are pushing interact here, we are making the timeline go. But if I want to push it again, I want to check whether or not the timeline is currently running. If it is running, I want it to stop. And that will stop all movement on that timeline. So let's get a check to see whether or not the timeline is running. So drag your zipline travel component uh, no, variable out and choose get. And then from there, we want to get uh, is playing uh, maybe just type in is playing there you go is playing and that gets us a uh, boolean and the boolean we can plug into a branch and if it's true we push it again we want to stop if it's not true Again, let's start there. If it's not true, I want it to do the rest of what we currently had. So false goes down into there, and that will do it. Click compile. So now, if I was to jump onto my zip line, let's test it on the big one. It's easy to check. I could push E and jump off of it. So I can quit out of my zip lining whenever I like by just pushing the E key and I can rejoin it by pushing that E okay. and that's kind of it um, we've done it I think so that's the zip lines that you see in games such as Apex Legends as well many others um, but it's quite a fully functioning zip line it works quite nicely because we can easily place it wherever we like so we can put the start down and just drag the end to wherever we like and it'll work and that's one of the beauties of it if you've liked this uh, video and particularly like this series, please let us know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to the channel for future videos. And if you have any suggestions about other game mechanics in existing games that you want to see featured on Let's Create, please let us know in the comments below and I'll happily take on any suggestions from my, uh, my fans. Thanks very much for watching and um, thank you all for your support on Patreon. Please head over there if you want to watch other videos and exclusives, head over there right now and you can submit uh, submit some support sorry for at least a dollar to get loads of videos and discord action as well as many other benefits too thanks very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye